Hi, everyone. So, as you might notice, the uh, weather has turned a bit bad since the last time we spoke. Um, we still have a bit to talk about microcontrollers, you know, not much is left, but uh, let's get right on to that because uh, I'm out of cup ramen and uh, baked beans, so this will, be, uh, this will be our last episode on that for a while at least. Let's get right to it. Hello everyone, my name is Liana and welcome to a new episode of Cloud Chats with Cats. In today's episode we will look at part 3 of our microcontroller series and especially the part where we finally set up the sensors on the board and get the data into our IoT application. As you probably already remember, our plan is to connect sensors to a microcontroller that will then send the data to IoT through the MQ connection. First of all, let's take a look at how we will configure the sensors, attach them to the board and send the data from the microcontroller to our IoT through the MQ connection. So let's take a look at the sensors first. Now let's have a closer look at the wiring. So as you can see, we have our ESP8266 board here and the wiring is very simple. This is the DHT11 sensor that we will be using to measure temperature and humidity. And as you can see, the DHT11 sensor has three pins, a uh, plus for V in, minus for ground and out for data. And we'll just wire those three and they go into our board. The uh, V in and ground go into these two pins over here. And then the data pin goes into GPIO2, which is D4. So there we go, a very simple wiring for our exercise. So now that we have set up the sensors and everything is working properly, let's test it and see that the data is indeed sent to IoT. Let's take a look at the changes that we made in the code in order to get the data from the sensor. As you can see, we are using the DHT11 sensor and we are using GPIO2 for the data pin, which is D4 on the board. Then for the uh, Wi-Fi connection, nothing has changed. And the same for the MQTT client. Everything is like we set it before in a previous episode. Of course, I have commented the MQTT client subscribe because I don't want to be receiving the messages on the board as well. And then we have defined the temperature and the humidity for the sensors, right, of data type byte. And then we read the data from the sensor and we print an error in case there is an error. Otherwise, we can print the sample data on the serial monitor. Of course, this is commented right now as I don't want to be uh, printing the data each time it reads it. Then we create the payload. The payload is created using the device ESPA266, then the temperature where we put in our variable and then the humidity. And we create a JSON payload. Then we publish it to the topic on MQTT and we convert it to char so we can send it with MQTT publish. And then we loop the MQTT client and uh, the onConnect function is not used because we're not subscribing. So this is everything that was changed to the code, so nothing much here. So now we've configured the sensors and everything is working properly. It's time to look at the ThingsBoard IoT and check that the sensors are properly displayed in the dashboard. Of course, we need to configure that. So let's take a look at how we can do that. And now let's connect to ThingsBoard IoT and check out the dashboard that we have installed the last time. So if you remember, we went into solution templates and installed the temperature and humidity sensors dashboard. Let's take a look at the integration as well. And as you remember, we had an uplink data converter. This is used to send the data to the dashboard. And of course, we set the host and the port and allowed it to create devices or assets. So if we take a look inside the uh, decoder, we can see that uh, we are giving the device type the name DHT11, and then we do a decode to JSON on the payload that we receive. And then we set a result with a device name and type, which are mandatory. And then the telemetry is data.temperature and data.humidity. This telemetry will be attached to our device that will be automatically created by this integration. And we can also check that the integration is working properly. As you can see, we are receiving data 
as long as the sensor is connected, of course, to the board and the board is plugged in. Now, if we go in the device groups, we can see here that the device has been automatically created. And here we can see also the telemetry. The raw data is an old telemetry that we're not using anymore. So we've got the humidity and temperature. Now, if we go into our dashboards, you can see here that I have two dashboards. Basically, what I did was I exported the dashboard temperature and humidity and then imported it under a different name because I didn't want to change the uh, default one provided by them because I wanted to, to play with it a bit. So if we go into this dashboard called DHT sensors, I will show you all the modifications that we need to do in order to receive data from our sensor. So as you can see here, it's all configured. And basically we need to go into edit mode. And then we need, first of all, to assign an entity alias. So this was set by default to the device type temperature sensor, but we're changing it to DHT11, which is our device type. After we do this and we save, that's all we need to do here. And then our device will automatically appear in the sensors. I then edited it and enabled high temperature and low humidity alarms. I set 30 for the temperature and 45 for the humidity, and then added a latitude and longitude to see it on the map. If we click on our sensor in the widget, we can see some data related to it, real time, and it's default set to the last seven days, but we need to switch it to an hour so we can see the data from when I did the, uh, the configuration, right? So here we select one hour for both humidity and temperature, and here's the data coming in. And of course, we can see how the temperature and the humidity has changed over time. Now, going back, we can also see some alarms here. And let me show you how we add the alarms. So these need to be done on the device profile. And here you see I have two alarm rules defined. As you can see, we have one critical that has been acknowledged. We have a major one, the new one that I acknowledge right now. And then if we clear it, the status will change from active to cleared. And then, of course, a new one immediately comes in because the humidity is still below 45. In order to stop the alarms from appearing, we need to go into our sensor and just disable the low humidity alarm. Then once we acknowledge and clear the alarm, no new ones come in. Of course, if we enable it again, we will see the alarms pop up as long as the humidity is below 45%. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Cloud Chats with Cats. I hope you found the information useful and interesting, and I'll catch you in the next episode with some more fun stuff on Oracle Cloud. See you all. In the meantime, I need to go and replace all the capacitors on my PS3, since one of them blew up, so 